So, uh, my name is Mark Tindall. I'm the manager here at the Mental Sales Gallery. We're part of the Portland Art Museum. Um, we are a members uh, contemporary art gallery here in downtown Portland. We have got uh, more than 210 current member artists and an inventory of well over 1,000 individual works of art. We are unique in Portland in that we offer our works both for sale and for rental. So our clientele, uh, which is both individual clients, corporate clients, businesses, non-profits, TV and movie productions, they can not only purchase artworks from us, but can also rent pieces for up to three months at a time as well. And we found that this model really is a wonderful way for people to access fine art for a fraction of a piece's purchase price you can take home an artwork for up to three months, you can display it in your office, you can display it wherever you see fit. It creates this wonderful accessibility of work. And among our artists, um, the model we have here has proven to be tremendously successful and tremendously popular. We, as I said, we have more than 200 member artists on our books, some of whom have been with the gallery for more than 50 years. So the Mental Sales Gallery was founded in 1959. Um, it was founded here at Portland Art Museum, the intention being to have a space to showcase the work of uh, local artists, many of whom were coming through the art school at the time, but Portland at that point really lacked a gallery structure for them to really showcase the work in the manner that they wanted. So a decision was made by the uh, Women's Committee, as it was then known, to, uh, to create a gallery space. They had the vision and the foresight to not only create a gallery, but create a gallery which has this model uh, to it. And among our artists, as I said, we have some people who've been here more than 50 years, even nearly 60 years in the gallery, which just shows the tremendous loyalty that the gallery has. We are always adding new artists into the gallery too. Um, and our model is one of when you become a member artist here at the gallery, the relationship can last as long as anybody wants it to last, which is why we speak to having artists here for such a long period of time. It's one where we look to grow and evolve together. We start showcasing work, many of the artists' styles change over time. And it's based around the mutual trust, mutual connection, an opportunity to know that we are showcasing each other. And as a non-profit gallery, we can really emphasize our, a lot of our effort into supporting the artists to be a space where they can show themselves. What does it mean for an artist to be a member? What, what's the benefit? So the, the benefits to artists here is you have the opportunity to have a very much a long-term display relationship. So if it's working for the gallery, it's working for the artist. We look to keep the artists here in the gallery as long as we you know, as long as they so wish to be. Um, as a non-profit, we can give a substantial portion of um, any fees that, that we make on the artwork back to the artist. We do a 50-50 split of the rental fees with the artists, and we do a 60-40 split. Of, um, of any sales of the artists, 60% going to the artists themselves. So the, the chance to earn an additional sort of part of the commission is, is I think, one of the things that we are very proud to be able to offer um, here in the space. We operate as a member's model, um, meaning that to join the Mental Sales Gallery, you are either invited or juried into the gallery. Um, we are, in fact, doing a jury show this summer, uh, summer of 2022. We are uh, extending opportunity for new artists to apply to have their works uh, brought into the gallery. Uh, we'd like to say there's a fantastic jury panel in place for that. But we have recently started to do invitational shows as well, where we uh, are hand-picking uh, artists, we are developing relationships with artists, we're viewing their works, we're seeing the needs that the gallery has to become a more representative, diverse space, to really showcase the great variety and depth of talent here in Portland to provide the works that our clientele will be looking for as well as we diversify and grow our clientele too. And between all, all those things, I think we are in a process of a, a real sense of growth now after you know some challenging years, as I think many, many galleries and many arts organizations and all connected organizations have been going through. We're now in a place where it's given us a chance to do something of a reset, to view what we are right now as an organization and guided by the Port Art Museum and the values of equity, diversity, inclusion, and showcasing of voices that perhaps have not been seen or heard before, guided by those values, 
Is it typically, are they uh, Oregon artists or are we limited to being Oregon or Northwest? Yeah, we are uh, specifically a gallery for artists from the Pacific Northwest. So it's artists from Oregon and from Washington. Uh, that's the art artistic group that we work with. We found that it's a great selling point for the gallery that you know, people come here knowing that we are representing outstanding work from regional con uh, contemporary artists. I think that really is something that excites them and brings, an, again, an added bonus to the work that we do here. So the, to, to pick one of the pieces that we have here, so this particular piece, this is uh, Two Oaks by uh, John Jay Crusson. Uh, John Jay is a, an artist I think, based down in Southern Oregon. He produces these fabulous uh, kind of like layered um, land, landscapes, landscapes of both reality and imagination. So this one is priced at $1,800 for purchase, for rental for a three months, it's a one-off payment of $104. So the rental price is a very low proportion of the purchase price. We deliberately set it low. So it's just over $100 to rent a piece of art and just nearly $2,000 to, to purchase. And we deliberately set the rental price low because we want people to access these works, to be able to take them home. We work on a sliding scale, so the greater the purchase price of the piece, the lower the um, rental fee will be in proportion to the purchase price. And that's again a deliberate choice to ensure that pieces don't sort of get out of hand in terms of their purchase prices. So even the very most expensive ones uh, will rarely be more than between two and four hundred dollars rental for even the most expensive uh, pieces that, that, that we have. And it's a one-off fee for the three months. Uh, a client can renew the artwork for another three months on exactly the same terms, and half of the fee that you've paid on rentals goes towards the purchase price. We discount the 50% uh, that is the artist portion of rental fee back to the client. And we also offer interest-free installment payments as well. So we're trying to do everything we can to take away the boundaries that might discourage people from accessing um, original contemporary art, this idea of being able to take pieces for you know, a fixed period of time and try them in your spaces. We do also offer delivery services as well, so we can bring the pieces to clientele and install them. Our corporate clients absolutely love that service, unsurprisingly, because they can sometimes be renting a number of pieces at a time, often quite large ones. So the fact that we can bring a team, install it for them, and do the full package. You know, we know we have this wonderful selection of artwork here and our whole mentality is one of taking joy in the pieces and enjoying having connections with our clientele. We have to come with that. Almost all these pieces are catalogued online, right? So we can view the pricing? That, that is correct, yes. So every single piece that we have in the gallery um, it can be found on our online inventory. Uh, so all of the information required to make a choice is there. The purchase price, the rental price, medium, size, you know, the artist's information themselves, obviously the names of the pieces, that information is all provided uh, online. Not only do we have a browse function where you can go artist by artist and just see every work by one particular artist, we offer a more in-depth search function. We have artists here who are at all sorts of different stages of their careers. We've, you know, we're looking to represent people like Gary Anderson and George Johansson, Sidoni Caron, who you know, are established in the community here, are well-known, well-regarded figures. But we have artists who are at earlier points of their career, who are growing themselves, who are developing their identity, who are developing their work. So for them to be able to showcase themselves in other spaces is something that we are personally delighted about. And I think you know, it is that rising tide. I think it lifts, it lifts all boats, it lifts ours, it lifts other galleries, and it most importantly lifts the artist um, as well. So when an artist joins the gallery for the first time, when they come in as a new artist, we take six works from the, the, the artist as like our sort of starting point with them. And with those six works, we will generally work with the artist to make a selection, and we ask them to make a, a selection of what they feel represents themselves and the work that we want to see the most. Um, then when an artist is in the gallery, they have a couple of different opportunities to bring in new work. We do a members show twice a year, so in the spring and in the fall, April and October. That is for all our member artists, they have the opportunity to submit up to three works, up to two of which 
will be selected and brought into the gallery as, as new pieces. That's all done online, so myself and the jury team, we work from the uh, images that are provided online of the works. So we do that twice, that show twice a year, but outside of that, artists can bring in pieces to replace sold works. So we really encourage artists to, if they are successful here and their works are, are selling, then they can bring in the new pieces to, to you know, grow their inventory for that. That process is one where we, again, work with the artist collaboratively to, to see what they select. Often what happens is an artist will provide a selection of pieces, uh, images of which for, for me to consider, or even bring them in in person. And then from that, we choose what we feel will be the best fit in the gallery, what's hitting the kind of the style and price point, you know, what's giving the variety of work that we're looking for, what they are working on perhaps right this moment that they're most excited about. It might be totally different to what we've had otherwise, but we're very excited to bring in something new and different. And some artists really do specialize, I think, in that of like constantly evolving their style and technique. So as with all things we do, we aim it to be a very collaborative, decision and you know one that I think works to everyone's advantage. The shows for the existing members, our, our, our spring and fall shows, we do a mixture of uh, internal jurors plus one external juror, usually another artist for those shows. For the new artist shows, for bringing the new artists into the gallery as members, um, I don't know whether this is going to be an annual thing going forward or every two years, you know, we are going to be looking at that and seeing how the gallery progresses and you know, how our membership is growing, how we want, where we want to focus our efforts on that. The jurying process for that is a little more in depth. Um, we have jurors, again, a mixture of internal jurors plus at least two external jurors to give us different voices. For this uh, summer show, I'm delighted to say that we, we have got a, a couple of jurors, one of whom is another gallery owner here in Portland and another is a uh, leading member of a regional arts nonprofit, so they are you know, really doing, having great external knowledge that they can bring to the work that we do. So it's, it like all these things, it is a collective decision. We are you know, developing a new approach as we as we go along here. The the, the way we're, we're intending to work it, the new artist shows going forward is we'll view submissions online. We'll get a short list of artists from those submissions, and then I think we will probably look to view works in person, invite the artists to bring their works in in person, and then collectively make a final decision about who we want to then bring into the gallery space, like actually get that real sense of the pieces in person. If you're viewing online um, and you want to send a client down here, you want to come down here, uh, does it show that that piece is rented out? Um, or, or how does that work? Yeah. So the website itself does show um, what, what the status of each individual piece is, whether it is in gallery, whether it is on rental, whether it has been sold. So you can see in advance of coming even in person to the gallery whether a piece actually is here or not. Um, we regularly keep the website updated, so we always have that information be accurate because we know how important that is for that. The thing that we can offer though, uh, because obviously we have this rental model, is um, if a client is particularly interested in a piece and it's out on rental, we can reserve it when it's when and if it's returned back to the back here. So we would take the client's contact information, make a note of it on the record of the artwork, and we just call or email the client as soon as it comes back in and we can hold it in the gallery until they're able to come. And that is something that, that our clientele often do take because see a piece or they remember a piece that they've seen before and perhaps they've really specifically fallen in love with it and you know that's the one that they want so anything again that we can do that makes use of the fact that we have this level of detailed information available I think really benefits uh, all, all concerned. Yeah, and then so Jennifer had a question about the financing. Yeah. Yeah so like if somebody decides that um, they really want the piece mm -hmm. but they want to go on terms. Yeah. Is that is does the piece still stay in their house and there and is the term similar to the rental number that was initially established or is there a whole different pricing thing that happens? 
So um, we can offer a purchase plan to, to clients and we will work with the clients themselves to establish terms that they are uh, happy and comfortable with. We would generally take a 20% uh, of the purchase price as the down payment and then it'd be monthly payments um, after that. We generally aim to keep any purchase plan under 12 months for the sake of the artist um, you know, so that they have a sort of reasonable amount of money coming to them in a reasonable amount of time but it will depend upon the value of the piece if, if a client is purchasing a particularly expensive piece or multiple pieces at a time there's flexibility in there to find monthly payments so that's sort of acceptable to everybody and again we will tailor it to particular people's needs on that um, the purchase plan is interest free the uh, only thing uh, we do charge a small processing fee because we use an online system to manage the payments for us but the actual artwork themselves is interest free and the client does get to keep it at home. Once they have taken it home on rental, if they turn the rental into a purchase, it does not have to be returned to the gallery. They, they keep it and we pay it off as we go along. So again, a really simple process, very much focused on being kind of user friendly and I think that's a huge part again of what, what we can offer. Well, it's great too because it makes it accessible. Yeah. There's not everybody maybe has an extra three thousand dollars sitting around that they can go. I can afford a couple hundred dollars a month that ultimately end up with exactly that. You know, you know, and, and I think the accessibility of to art is a huge, huge part of what makes the Mental Fails Gallery what we are. And uh, you know, we understand the market that we're in. We are trying to create a grow a clientele and grow a base of people who are not just passionate about fine original art but able to access it and have it in their spaces whatever it may be and I think that really matches the mission of the museum as a whole and I think it's a great fit for a city like Portland you know with the kind of the size of art market we have and the client base that we have and are excited to be growing together. That's correct, yeah, that, that, that's an old Hamilton up there, yes. So, in the pricing mm -hmm. of the piece, are you consistent to the pricing that they would find for a similar size piece at a gallery that they're represented at? Actually, is the, yes. Is that level yeah. Yeah, maintained? We, we, it, we ask that artists price their pieces consistently with what they would be pricing in, in other galleries. Of course, we can give guidance and you know, provide a thought for that. Some of our artists who perhaps don't have representation at other galleries you know, may come to us to get ideas on what the work should price them. In some cases, we're often saying you should price your works higher because yeah. you know because the quality of your work and the manner in which it sells and the response we get from the clientele that purchases them really points to you can increase the value of the work and it will still be successful and well received. So Mark, how would someone volunteer if they wanted to get involved and volunteer? Do you have anything like that? That's a wonderful question, yeah. Volunteering is the lifeblood of, of the gallery. We, we are delighted to have a really passionate, committed team of volunteers here. We are actually just starting to recruit more volunteers into the gallery again. The, the museum had a period where we were holding off recruiting people, but we're just about, we are just starting doing that again now. The way in which to do it is to contact the, the gallery um, to our website. There is a contact email. Um, let us know if you're, if you're interested and we'll start a conversation. And so what would that look like? Give us a little bit of an idea. What would that look like? Maybe just yeah. like build it out. There's options. And Absolutely, things. yeah. We, we try to be really flexible with the volunteer options that we make. Um, generally speaking, most of our volunteers will do a one three-hour shift a week or every two weeks. So we, we are open six hours a day. So we do kind of do morning shift and we do an afternoon shift. We also want to use kind of like swing volunteers who are just um, make themselves available as and when um, oh, okay. there's, there's a need. We just want you really flexible because we understand everyone is in different points of their life when mm -hmm. it comes to volunteering. So that flexibility of when when to come in is a really important point. So you know the way to, to do it is we start a dialogue. You know, people can just get in touch, give, you know, mm -hmm. get in touch by email. We'll set up the conversation. Then it'll be a process of after a meeting if everyone's and excited by the opportunity, we'll go ahead and work with the museum's HR department and we'll get you set up as a volunteer. So I just want to do a few little highlights of particular artists in the gallery. Obviously it's you know, a great challenge to do this because we have, as I said, more than 200 artists, all of whom we are really delighted to represent, all of whom are doing 
really varied and powerful and exciting different work. But um, one artist perhaps to, to highlight, I think if you are familiar with the art, artist community here in Portland, I think you'll probably recognize his style. You'll certainly recognize the name. This is a work by George Johansson, one of the real sort of grand men of, of, of the Portland art community. Now, George has been in the gallery almost since its inception in 1959. And he showcased many hundreds of his works here over the years. So this particular piece of his, um, this one is called In the Studio. It's uh, one of our recently acquired ones from, from George, showcasing you know, one of his kind of distinctive styles of these, uh, these very distinctive human figures that he creates. Beautiful color palette. And it's one we're very excited to have uh, here in the gallery. And George has been a tremendous supporter of ours for many, many years. So we're excited to continue this relationship with him. We hope that we'll get many more pieces from him in the future as well. And then at the other end of the scale, uh, this piece, uh, Artists MRI by Lindsay Holcomb, is one of our newest artists. Lindsay joined us in February of 2022. Uh, she was one of a group of uh, artists that we invited into the gallery to um, create, to begin the process of creating a more diverse atmosphere with, within there, within the gallery of our artists, but also because we think her work is just simply speaking absolutely sensational as well. Um, this piece um, is it's a multi uh, mixed media piece based around her MRI scan that she has and she, she took this is the artist's brain and she took this and created this stunning uh, piece using thread and ink and cutouts. Um, Lindsay herself uh, has been diagnosed with MS and she uses these works to present uh, her condition but also to be sort of like proudly powerful about it as well. She runs and has created an international program called Colors of MS, where she takes MRI scans of people from all across the world and turns them into these stunning original works of art. So an intensely vulnerable, but also deeply empowering approach to her art. And we are very proud to have not only Lindsay, but also Lindsay's brain here in the gallery as well. Finally, I just want to showcase um, a couple of the most newly acquired pieces here in the gallery. Uh, Metal Cells Gallery is bringing in new artworks all the time. Um, as artists uh, sell pieces, we invite them to, to replace them as well as doing obviously the shows as well. So this particular piece uh, is called In From The Deep. It's by Michael Schlichting. And this piece here, this beautiful little, little, little um, uh, plein air painting here. This is called Sea Stacks In The Morning Mist, Paris Beach. It's by uh, Catherine Cottmark. So Michael and Catherine uh, both recently sold their works and these are two uh, replacement pieces that came in. What I love about these works is not only do you get to see the beautiful pieces themselves, but it gives you the taste of the richness and variety of the collection of works that, that we hold here in, in the gallery. You know, the differences in price points, the differences in style, the differences in size. So there's something here really for everybody to get excited about and to be able to see. And I think it's, you know, it's just a fabulous pair of works. So we're delighted to showcase these, we're delighted with, to showcase so many artists here. We know it's going to be a growing family going forward as well.